This is a story. A true story. Since the year 2000, an eerie and impressive half-sunken ship has been abandoned in Roderick Bay of the Ngala Islands, near the Solomon Islands, in Micronesia. I was on that ship the day it sunk. Working as a waiter, and I've got an unbelievable untold story to reveal. For those who are not familiar with this very special ship and its fate, I will start with a quick introduction. The MS World Discoverer was born in 1974, in Bremerhaven, Germany. With a capacity of 230 people, 150 passengers and 80 crews, the World Discoverer was a home to many expedition groups, led by historians, archaeologists, geologists, marine biologists, photographers, naturalists, allowing them to land on the most remote shorelines and observe its wildlife, by using inflatable zodiacs that the vessel was equipped with. The World Discoverer was, for many reasons, one of a kind, as she was constructed for exclusive cruising expeditions near or around icebergs, allowing periodic voyages to the Antarctic Peninsula. This ocean liner also had an over 8,000-mile cruising range, allowing her to be the first ship to ever transit the Northwest Passage. Besides the Antarctic, the ship sailed around the Alaskan region and around the Bering Sea. From March to May she would cruises around the South Pacific Islands. It was in one of this South Pacific trips that on April 30, 2000, this adventurous and intrepid ship, hit a large uncharted reef on the Solomon Island Sandfly Passage, which would sadly put her on premature retirement. But let's go back to the 28th and 29th of April to see what else could have happened. Everything was so fascinating. I was living the dream, captured by the enchantment of the Micronesia landscapes. Every day we visited a different paradise. Vanuatu, where the Aborigines lived in the most flourishing nature, truly far from our Western reality. We brought them water. We traded shirts with shells. But above all, we exchanged unforgettable smiles and looks in the eyes. Papua New Guinea, where the Aborigines received us bareback, with straw skirts and thick blonde hair, dancing and playing with great bamboo flutes Peruvian style. Another very significant characteristic of these tribes, was definitely superstition. Unfortunately I don't remember the exact date, but surely two or three days before the fateful 30th of April, before docking on the next island, the ship's walls were filled with a warning message saying that the inhabitants of the next island refuse the color red. They believe it's bad omen and carries bad luck, and therefore it was advised not to wear, or at least to cover, any garment that contained the cursed color. I believe I respected the ban, I was fascinated by these things too. But, without blaming anyone, I'm not sure that we all followed the advice. Accidentally but inevitably, some red could have appeared in the logo of a hat, the backpack pocket, a camera bag, a sock. In short, I can't prove it, but if the island was stained of this forbidden color, it could explain why, not later than 48 hours, on Sunday April 30, 2000, at 4 p.m. local time, the inevitable happened. We hit a large uncharted reef. What do you think? Is there a connection? Just a coincidence? For now, like and subscribe.